the train. On one side, littered England, iron sheds and airfields mire. On the other, fire gutted trees, a hand raking the carriage windows. Where was my bastard white grandsire from? He left somewhere a century ago to found his farm, and like a thousand others, drunkenly seed this archipelago. Through a soiled glass, his landscape pours and filters through this face. Black with despair, he set himself on fire, crumbling a tree of flame. That's hell enough for here. His blood burns through me as his engine races. My skin sears like a hair shirt with his name. On the bleak Sunday platform, the guiltless staring faces divide like tracks before me as I come. Like you, grandfather, I have not changed places. I am half home. The Gulf. The airport coffee tastes less of America. Sour, unshaven, dreading the exertion of tightening, racked nerves fueled with liquor, some smoky, resinous bourbon, the body buckling at its casket hole, a roar like last night's blast racing its engines, watches the fumes of the exhausted soul as the trans-Texas jet screeching begins its flight and friends diminish. So to be aware of the divine union, the soul first detaches itself from created things. We're in the air, the Texan near me sighs. All things, these matches from LBJ's campaign hotel, this rose given me at dawn in Austin by a child. This book of fables by Borges, its prose a stalking moonlit tiger. What was willed on innocent sun-streaked Dallas, the beast's claw curled around that hairspring rifle is revealed on every page as lunacy or feral law. Circling that wound, we leave love field. Fondled, these objects conjure hotels, quarrels, new friendships, bare limbs as coolly molded as these autumn hills memory penetrates as the jet climbs the new clouds over Texas. Their home means an island suburb, forest, mountain water. They are the simple properties for scenes whose joy exhausts like grief. Scenes where we learn, exchanging the least gifts, this rose, this napkin, that those we love are objects we return. That this light on the desert's wrinkled skin has priced our flesh, all that we love in pawn to that brass ball. So the gifts multiplying clutter and choke the heart, and so I shall watch love reclaim its things as I lie dying, my very flesh and blood. Each seems a petal shriveling from its core. I watch them burn. By the nerves flare, I catch their skeletal candor. Best never to be born, the great dead cry. Their works shine on our shelves. By evening light, we tore their gravestone spines and read until the lamplit page revolves to a sure stasis whose detachment shines like a propeller's rainbowed radiance. They lied like us, no comfort for their loves. The cold glass darkens. Elizabeth wrote once that we make glass the image of our pain. 
I watch clouds boil past the cold, sweating pane above the gulf. All styles yearn to be plain as life. The face of the loved object under glass is plainer still. Yet somehow at this height, above this cauldron boiling with its walls, our old earth breaking to familiar light, that cloud-bound mummy with self-healing scars, peeled of her cerements, again looks new. Some cratered valley heals itself with sage. Through that gray, fading massacre, a blue, light-hearted creek flutes of some siege to the amnesia of drumming water. Their source is still renewed. The divine union of these detached, divided states whose slaughter darkens each summer now, as one by one the smoke of bursting ghettos clouds the glass, down every coast where filling station signs proclaim the gulf, an air heavy with gas sickens the state from Newark to New Orleans. Yet the South felt like home, wrought balconies, that sluggish river with its tidal drawl, the tropic air charged with the extremities of patience, a heat heavy with oil, cane breaks, that legendary jazz. But fear thickened my voice. That strange, familiar soil prickled and barbed the texture of my hair, my status as a secondary soul. The gulf your gulf is daily widening. Each blood-red rose warns of that coming night when there's no rock cleft to go hiding in and all the rocks catch fire. When that black might, their stalking moonlit panthers turn from him whose voice they can no more believe. When the black exes mark their pass over with slain seraphim. The gulf shines dull as lead. The coast of Texas glints like a metal rim. I have no home as long as summer, bubbling to its head, waits for that day when in the Lord God's name the coals of fire are heaped upon the head of all whose gospel is the whip and flame, age after age, the uninstructing dead. A news clip, the invasion of Biafra. Black bodies sliced by sunlight, sprawled on the white road, entering, what's its name? The central city. Someone whose white illuminates the news behind the news, eyes glazed with, perhaps, pity. The Igbos, you see, are like the Jews, very much the situation in Hitler's Germany, I mean the Hauser's resentment. I try to see. I never knew you, Christopher or Kigbo, nor imagined you when an actor screamed, the tribes, the tribes. I catch the guttering, torch-lit faces of Igbos, stuttering, bug-eyed peasants before some drumhead tribunal. The soldiers' helmeted shadows could have been white, and yours, one of those light-shot bodies on the road into murdered for all that rhetoric, that prose. The tribes, the tribes, the shame of that great city. Christ, what is its name? Those five or six young guys bunched on the stoop that oven hot summer night whistled me over, nice and friendly. So I stop, MacDougall or Christopher Street in chains of light. A summer festival or some saints. I wasn't too far from home, but not too bright for a nigger, not too dark. I figured we were all one, wop, nigger, Jew. Besides, this wasn't Central Park. I'm coming on too strong, you figure right, they beat this yellow nigger black and blue. 
Yeah, during all this, scared in case one used a knife, I hung my olive green, just bought sports coat on a fire plug. I did nothing. They fought each other rarely. Life gives them a few kicks, that's all. The spades, the spits. My face smashed in, my bloody mug pouring, my olive branch jacket saved from cuts and tears. I crawled four flights upstairs. Sprawled in the gutter, I remember a few watchers waved loudly and one kid's mother shouting like, Jackie or Terry, now that's enough. It's nothing really, they don't get enough love. You know they wouldn't kill you, just playing rough like young America will. Still, it taught me something about love. If it's so tough, forget it. This is the inevitable poem about a cat. As carefully as old Carlos Williams's cat's foot forks the air, and the steel tines sheathing back from some pneumatic nothing, my mind feels each crack in that blue sky. It is going to pieces. There is a stain there on the blue plaster. Spell it, it spells disaster. I'll hoard, I'll huddle, I'll contain myself. Between this bed and mirror is a mold I must inhabit. It itches, it is ill. To be a bridge, they said, all you need do is keep still. To surrender the illusion that mirrors wait, clothes wait hourly from their gibbet. Her green eyes socket every action like a pinball. She coils around some quiet that is inward. Finally, she ovals her fine ringing teeth, their silent yowl. The green eyes swallow yours, they gulp replete, waking each hair is stirred. I watch my body walking, silent, furred, those feet, whose are those feet? Cold Spring Harbor, Long Island. From feather-stuffed bolsters of cloud, Falling on casual linen, the small shrieks soundlessly float. The woods are lint-wreathed. Dawn crackles like foil to the rake of a field mouse nibbling, nibbling its icing. The world is unwrapped in cotton, and you would tread wool if you opened quietly, whitely, this door, like an old Christmas card turned by a child's dark hand. Did he know it was dark then? The magical, brittle branches, the white house collared in fur, the white world of men, its bleeding ghouls and its buried drops. Two prancing, immobile white ponies, no bigger than mice, pull the carriage across soundless hillocks of cotton. Bells hasped to their necks didn't tinkle, though you begged God to touch them to life. Some white-haired old God who'd forgotten or no longer trusted his miracles. What urges you now towards this white, snow-whipped woods is not memory of that dark child's toys, not the cards of a season forever foreign that went over its ridges like a silent sleigh. That was a child's sorrow. This is child's play, but one through which you cannot go, dumbstruck at an open door, stunned, fearing the strange violation because you are missing your children of perfect snow. This is to the memory of Frank O'Hara. Dirt under the fingernails 
of the window ledges. In the embossed Rococo ceiling, grime flowering like a street opera. Ah, dim Con Edison nights of the packing case district of my cardboard Little Italy. Ah, my blown out, fly blown Bohemia. There was dirt on the peach down tan of the girls of the golden Midwest. Où sont ces vierges? Elles sont au Spring Falls, Iowa, Columbus, Tucson. Gone their coarse black ponytails. Gone is the autumnal reverie of Indian blankets, birch calendars, and the snow creek quivering its palomino haunches to the house fly. Sex far as the whinnying of ponies. Back to the pickets of pure Minnesota. To the strict aged elms that predicted their return. To the flowered heads calves and the supermarkets and the evergreen reviews they cannot burn, back to Christina's world. And the cheap cocktail bars by which I homed, their neon glowers like Mars. Ah, happy, grimy time between small wars. Then one could still write on the moon, nostalgia was just so much halva and nougat and was out of fashion like death and one caught style from others like a cold, could look at Mimi washing her soiled feet as life imitating Lautrec. One planned to grow old with new teeth grinning at old souvenirs of the lordly Hudson, the Judson, and little Venice, and made vague plans to die. In Spring Street's dusty hermitage, where I crouched over poems, plays, drawings, I knew we'd all live as long as Hokusai. <laughs>